Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Department of Fisheries is in the process of developing a national fisheries policy. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is finalizing arrangements for the arrival of the United States Naval Ship Voluntary Medical Mission. The government of St. Lucia and MSC Cruises are furthering discussions for a port facility in the south of the island. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NGN Nouvelle Arcreon. The Department of Fisheries, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, hosted a workshop for stakeholders to develop a national fisheries policy which will inform the manner in which the subsector initiates actions to sustain, safeguard, and expand fisheries livelihoods. We hear more from the Ministry of Agriculture's Amanda Faye Clark. The workshop is an integral component of the Technical Cooperation Project, which is entitled Assistance with the Development of a National Policy on Fisheries. Its objective is to revise the National Fisheries Plan in order to incorporate clear policy statements on a number of thematic areas impacting the local fisheries, marine and aquaculture sector. Deputy Chief Fisheries Officer attached to the Department of Fisheries, Thomas Nelson, explains concerns such as illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, post-harvest issues on the ground such as sanitary and phytosanitary measures, trade and the overall impact of climate change on the industry are forefront of this week's deliberations. We have had an agriculture policy. We have also had a food and nutrition policy that really speaks to how we should move forward in terms of the development of the agriculture sector that includes fisheries and the agricultural policy speaks to food security it speaks to sustainability it speaks to uh, you know pollution uh, reduction uh, it speaks to you know a lot of the legal aspects um, in relation to whether it be land management ocean management and uh, a whole lot more. So this fisheries policy is not being uh, developed in isolation of uh, work that has been undertaken in the past. Fishery and Aquaculture Officer of the FAO, Dr. Yvette Deywadi, says her organization remains committed to assisting governments in implementing the best strategies for securing fisheries livelihoods and thus applauds the initiative of St. Lucia's fisheries leaders in developing a policy document that is unique and representative of the reality of the local fisheries sector. This morning we were reviewing uh, an important document uh, which is uh, now in force in uh, St. Lucia, the SASAP, the Sectoral Adaptation uh, um, I mean, uh, to Climate Change uh, and uh, Action Plan. This workshop has enabled to see the limitations that exist in the SASAP with uh, uh, the, 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 the lenses that we have, uh, critical lenses, but constructive lenses that we have, uh, we realize that uh, the SASAP document has some limitations and uh, this policy actually will benefit uh, the, these uh, gaps uh, analysis uh, to make it uh, a, 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 an instrument uh, which is very useful to the country. The role of fisheries and marine resources in the national economy is important. Improving the productivity of fisheries is vital in ensuring food and nutrition security, improve fisheries livelihoods and promote economic growth. Results, fisheries leaders say, will be sustainable once policies to protect the environment and natural resources are fully implemented by law. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. Danusha's Prime Minister and Chairman of the Caribbean Community Caricom, Honorable Alan Chastney, has expressed grave concern about the ability of St. Lucia and the region in dealing with the catastrophic realities of a Category 5 hurricane. Honorable Chastney concerns come against the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, which devastated the Abaco and Grand Bahama Islands in the Bahamas archipelago. CARICOM and the OECS are taking a collective approach to provide assistance to the Bahamas following the devastation by Hurricane Dorian. 
Prime Minister of St. Lucia and Chairman of CARICOM, the Honorable Alan Chasney, indicated that upon examination, regional heads agreed that logistically it was not feasible to get supplies to the Bahamas given the location, and so it was decided that cash donations would be more practical. The Prime Minister spoke to the issue during Tuesday's sitting. So we all agreed to contribute $100,000, and I think that Barbados put in $500,000. I know in the case of Trinidad and also of Jamaica, that in addition to some cash, they've also um, given them troops. Um, in the case of St. Lucia and Dominica, that we are in the process of sending up nurses and doctors and policemen who actually speak Creole, because clearly there is a community up there that they're having difficulty in communicating with. The immediate lesson, I have to say, Mr. Speaker, and that's why I wanted to make the intervention this morning, and I'm very grateful to the, the leader of the opposition to allow me to do so, is I think that we have to be honest with ourselves in that the preparations that we have for hurricanes or the process that we're going through predominantly co is concentrated on the pre-hurricane period. Um, and I'm not so sure, well I am sure, that we're actually taking into consideration um, the level of catastrophe that we've seen now in Dominica, in the BVI um, and in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Honorable Shasne noted that the move towards the government and ensuring that government processes and other relevant information was available electronically is crucial in the event of a disaster where documents and livelihoods are lost and individuals have to be evacuated. Additionally, the Prime Minister asserted that it is imperative that the country stores a reserve of funds in case of such an eventuality. It's for that reason that I have said, Mr. Speaker, that we now need to put more measures in place to deal with the aftermath of these storms. Right? So the ability to get people registered and know where they are and where they're moving to um, is critical. And, and that is, and I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a point that I, I wanted to make today, that we still have a tremendous amount of work to do um, in light of climate change. And that while we're desilting and clearing bushes and doing all these things and giving people advanced warnings of the hurricane, I am not so sure the same level of preparedness is being put in place to deal with an aftermath of the, of the size of a Dominica, of the size of a, of a BVI, um, that's currently what we just saw in Abaco. And I think that even though we're further south, we have to um, put these, uh, these, these things into in the practice. And the point from the member of Castro South is extremely well taken. The Prime Minister assured that the government is working assiduously to obtain the necessary resources to ensure functionality and return to normality following a disaster. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is finalizing arrangements for the arrival of the United States Naval Ship Comfort Voluntary Medical Mission. The United States Naval Ship Comfort will be in St. Lucia from September 23rd to October 2nd, 2019 and will be providing free medical services to residents. Services at the walk-in clinics will be provided from September 25th to 30th, 2019 at the OKEU Hospital and the National Cultural Center. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belmar george says the ministry has been holding meetings with the coordinating team from the ship. Due to the size of the hospital ship and the depth of our harbor, we will not be able to accommodate the vessel at Point Seraphine, as was indicated earlier but it will be berthed out at sea and a smaller vessel from Laplace Carinage, gate number two, will transport patients to the ship. All surgical patients and patients requiring CT scans will need to be accompanied by an adult when coming for surgery. That is, the person would need to come with the patient when they're doing the procedure and also remain with them on the ship during the provision of care and also during the admission on the ship. All patients confirmed for surgery are required to attend pre-screening on Tuesday, September 24, 2019 at 8 a.m. at the OKEU Hospital. These patients will be contacted by the Ministry of Health. We also want to indicate that all other clients who would like to access surgical care on the ship who have not yet sent in a referral to our office there is still an opportunity where you can come into one of the clinics at either the OKEU or the National Cultural Center to be seen and reviewed by the team, and then you can be scheduled for surgery. Arrangements have been made through the President of the National Council of Public Transportation 
to provide shuttle service to the OKEU hospital via the Cicero and Bexor buses and the National Cultural Center via the Leclerc buses. During the medical visit, contraband will not be allowed. These include cigarettes, marijuana, alcohol, licensed and unlicensed firearms and weapons. During the clinic setup on September 23rd to 24th, 2019, the public is alerted on increased activity from the port to the site of the clinics. This will include low-flying helicopters. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development continues to roll out its early childhood education reform with a workshop on the Early Learners Program Phase 2, Sensitization. Anissa Antoine has more. The Early Learners Program intends to address essential aspects of policy and practice in order to improve the reading levels of all learners at the early primary levels, grade K to grade 3. The Ministry of Education is currently in Phase 2 of the Early Learners Program, which focuses mainly on language policy, teacher professional development, and curriculum and assessment. Dawson Ragunanen is the Acting Deputy Chief Education Officer within the Ministry of Education. The ELP continues to provide a targeted approach towards improving reading. And for the past few years, especially about two years ago, we have seen the data. And there are many realities that we must consider. At the beginning, when the first assessment was done in 2016, it was realized that only 9% of students between grades K to 3 are reading at or above their grade level. After a year of intervention, the number had risen to about 16%, and that is very commendable. The Reading Development Program for Young Learners is being administered by the OECS Commission and funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. Lisa Sagusin Terence is the Reading Specialist for the OECS Early Learners Program. The vision of the education sector strategy is that every learner succeeds. And to achieve that vision, seven strategic imperatives have been identified. The Early Learner Learners Program allows us to respond to a number of these imperatives, such as improvements in teacher professional development, curriculum and assessment, and the quality of teaching and learning. We are grateful that the U.S. government through USAID has approved funding for the ELP and has further granted us an extension of 18 months ending September 2020 to improve the reading levels of our K-3 students in the region, thus allowing us to address one of the cross-cutting themes of improving achievement in levels in core subject areas such as literacy. The six beneficiary OECS member states in which the ELP is being implemented are Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do the that No, they do. think about the children Think about the children How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. It's the weekend once again, and I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. St. Lucian youth are being urged to take advantage 
as the National Enrichment and Learning Unit, NELU, is accepting applications and are currently conducting interviews for the Skills for Youth Employment SKY project. The SKY project is specifically targeting disadvantaged youth, including those with disabilities, between the ages of 15 and 30. The project is aligned with national, regional and international agendas on continued education and training. One such agenda is United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which articulates that by 2030, there must be substantial increase in the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical and vocational skills, for employment, decent jobs, and entrepreneurship. The National Enrichment and Learning Unit will receive funding to train 1,150 young people over a three-year period, 350 in year one, 400 in year two, and 400 in year three. The training will be certificated at Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ level, and will be offered in districts throughout the island. More than 35% of trainees will be male, more than 35% female, and 12% will be young people with disabilities. Forms can be obtained from the NELU's office located upstairs People's Discount Drug Store at the corner of St. Louis and Chisel Streets, Social Transformation Officers, Youth and Sports Councils, NELU's coordinators around the island. Persons who have applied are being urged to attend the interviews. Challenge swimmer Cameron Bellamy, who successfully took on a channel swim from Barbados to St. Lucia last weekend, spoke about the experience during a press briefing this week. Although not ending where he initially planned, the swimmer was delighted to have achieved the desired goal. The end of the swim was pretty difficult. Um, we've got a current going south and we're trying to get into view fort, touch rocks, and uh, had to push it pretty hard, but it was kind of uh, it was a spectacular place to finish <clears throat> under that cliff, touching those rocks. Um, I know it would have been nicer to finish on the beach and um, and have like uh, and meet people on the beach, even though I would have been kind of out of it <laughs> and everything. Um, I wouldn't be able to walk. Um, it was nice to finish there because it was very picturesque. And um, you know, from what I've seen of St. Lucia so far, it's, it's just like that. It's a beautiful, beautiful island. Bellamy said he felt very welcomed when he got on St. Lucian soil. The welcome I had when I got in, you know, having the prime minister. Um, visit me on the boat with my mom was uh was amazing too and since i've been here the uh the hospitality been has been amazing so just uh <clears throat> to start off with just want to say how grateful i am to the uh to St. Lucia and solution people for um for having me on your island the feat by the south african born swimmer also helped raise money for charities in barbados and saint lucia and that's how we end our weekend update from youth development and sports i'm ryan o'brien Thanks, Ryan. The government of St. Lucia and MSC Cruises are furthering discussions on the development of a port facility in the south of the island. Prime Minister Honorable Chastney revealed that talks held with the third largest cruise ship company in the world have been promising. The emphasis by my government is to improve the quality of cruise shipping in Castries, but not to expand the quantum of it, and that all of the increases in the size of the ships would be facilitated in the view fort area um, in order to be able to balance um, the, the cruise ship uh, uh, industry in St. Lucian. I think having two ports um, certainly augurs well and, and gives us that additional room. Furthermore, developing in the south gives us the opportunity of developing more home porting and, and that really is the business that we would like to be able to, to see more um, uh, success in. And that was Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. 
I give her my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcreo. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Universal Responsibility, with formation of Gouvernement Sedlici, as a GIS, as a MP Television National, PIA NTN, Caposato, Nouvelle Creole, Posato, Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement Sedlici, en discussion et puis en université des études touristiques qui bien avancé pour garder en possibilité pour établir en facilité en même façon à Sedlici. Premier ministre de l'Union Européenne, Alain Chasne, est jeune et puis chef de l'Université de Lausanne en Suisse-Zélande, pendant le Premier ministre de l'Union Européenne. C'est espoir que l'Université de l'Union Européenne ne service seulement pour cette ci mais aussi les autres pays en Caraïbes. Selon le Premier ministre Chasne, l'Union Européenne considère des de difficultés que les personnes qui sont pour entrer en Amérique et que manière industrie touristique là a augmenté en juin. Le gouvernement a créé une facilité des éducation en dégoué ça là, en cette ci qui a porté autant de bénéfices. Le programme d'éducation Lausanne qui a porté ni études des académiques et aussi le programme practical. Le Premier ministre a créé aussi que l'on considère le mot Cham Hotel en pays et aussi des dégoué à tout touristique qui a tué en cette ci Ça a une grande occasion pour les jeunes pour suivre leur éducation des affaires touristiques et le business de tout touristique aussi. Le Premier ministre Chasne a inspiré que les représentatifs de l'université de la université de cette ici, plus tard ici, dans les ici. Il dit que le projet DSH a bâti 230 chambres d'hôtel, spécifiquement quand il y a université d'hôtel. Le groupe Luzen, si il y a un agrément, il a procédé pour bâtir la propriété. Il y a déjà un plan de façon dont il y a bâti et déjà la compagnie a déjà travaillé et puis le groupe DSH en Suisse-Zélande. Le gouvernement s'est laissé à continuer pour montrer le commitment pour moderniser le service public PIA et qu'il y a une façon de faire le service gouvernement available pour tout ce qui est. Par conséquence de ça, le gouvernement a travaillé pour moderniser la meilleure façon pour le peuple trouver une licence pour l'auto. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour le développement économique et la transportation, on a Gaï Joseph, a expliqué que le département des affaires et de transportation a opéré automatiquement. En toute façon, et les citoyens qui ont trouvé ces services-là, qui ont servi Internet, là, à part de ça, les officiers loi qui ont aussi sa pour l'avantage de ces services-là, côté système-là, qui ont fait possible pour trouver des informations pour conduire le travail plus effectivement. Il y a un chef qui est responsable pour moderniser le secteur public, là, Marlon Nassis, dit que le projet là, qui est une façon pour implémenter le système là opérer à la service gouvernement. Ce qui est possible pour faire une façon pour trouver 30 services de gouvernement online. Ce qui est possible pour les gens faire application pour les sources de chauffeurs de l'auto online aussi. Pour que ça soit supposé commencer en l'année 2020. Le gouvernement, c'est le et la compagnie bateau touristique MSC en discussion pour développer une facilité de la WAD pour tout le pays. Le Premier ministre de Alain Chasne a déclaré que Discussion, il y a des chaînes et puis il y a des plus grandes compagnies bateaux touristiques à la terre qui ont trouvé un bon succès. Selon le Premier ministre Chasné, le plan gouvernement, c'est pour éprouver, faciliter, pour recevoir des bateaux touristiques à Castro, mais aussi pour ne pas placer tout effort à Ville Castro seulement. Pour ce sens-là, attention, il y a aussi placé à ce vieux fort pour faciliter même des bateaux touristiques. Le Premier ministre Chasné a cru que pour ni de la van pour recevoir des bateaux touristiques qui fait très bien pour cette ci Il a ajouté que le développement sur le castre a fait l'occasion pour ni plus de la van pour hausser et augmenter le business de bateaux touristiques en cette ci Et c'est comme ça que nous avons fait une madame. Je vous remercie pour votre temps pour garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour considérer que vous avez la vie. Vous avez fait une nouvelle vie. Vous avez fait une bonne fin de semaine. Et après ça, vous avez fait une bonne fin de semaine. Michel. Merci on Bill Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Over the extreme northern portion of the Lesser Antilles, it will be generally cloudy with some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. Elsewhere, it will be occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms. 
Moisture and instability in the lower atmosphere over the Eastern Caribbean islands will cause some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the next few days. A tropical wave located about 700 miles or 1,126 kilometers east of the Windward Islands is producing a large area of disorganized cloudiness and showers. The wave is expected to move quickly westward at about 20 miles per hour during the next few days and some development is possible while it approaches and moves across the Windward Islands this weekend. A tropical wave located near the west coast of Africa has the potential to develop into a tropical depression early next week as it moves westward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 12.39 p.m. and is high at present. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.06 p.m. and will be high again at 8.22 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.53 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.